Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning, September 14th, 2022. We get together with our distribution partners most weekday mornings at this time to talk about strategies, techniques, success stories. And uh, that's, I think, is, is specifically what we're going to be going through today are some best practices. Now, I do realize that the topic says regional vice president best practices, but the truth is some of this will overlap to those of you that are just simply a white label partner, not an RVP. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So let's just do a quick overview. We, we typically like to start the daily conversation out with kind of a, a recap. So we, we have a common foundation that we're, we're, uh, we're talking off of for the discussion for the day. So just a bit of background, the regional vice president known as the RVP is a leadership position, free and easy to become one, you know that, instrumental in our pursuit of increased financial literacy and access to capital for small businesses. So in other words, we have RVPs and their focus is to help us improve financial literacy and increase access to capital for small businesses. Specifically, RVPs assist in building a team of white label partners. Now, this is not network marketing. It's not MLM, obviously not Ponzi, but we have a structure, an organization, just like most businesses, especially larger businesses have. So at the top of the food chain are our RVPs, and then they have underneath them in their hierarchy and their team, white label partners. Now, it doesn't cost anything to be an RVP. We've already said that. And it doesn't cost anything to become a white label partner. So it's not about a pay to play type of model, but it is our infrastructure that we're building. We want to have an RVP in each state, as we talked about before. So the RVPs are really the team leaders building the team of white label partners. It's the white label partners that are actually reaching out in their communities to provide the programming. So now you could wear both hats, of course, but it's just important to understand. So RVPs are like team leaders. They're building the team. They're motivating the team. They're paid off the team's performance. That's not different than a lot of, of financial industry roles. And we have then the white label partners who are out actually rolling up their sleeves and working with the clients. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, there's no cost to be a regional vice president. RVPs are paid a very simple and consistent way. They're paid 2.5 points or 2.5% overrides from the production of their team. So if you have a white label partner, the white label partner brings on one client, client raises $100,000, so 2.5% of $100,000 is the $2,500 override. We're often working on larger capital raises. So if the client raises 200,000, the white label partner is still paid and the RVP is still paid an override, but now the override is off that larger amount, off of 200,000 in that example, instead of 100,000, and thus instead of a 2,500 override, it's a 5,000 override. We know clients are guaranteed a minimum of 100,000. So the, the, I think the easiest way to create a financial projection for yourself as an RVP is just base it off of the minimum. And so you could almost work backwards. Okay, how much money do I wanna earn this month in September? Divide that by 2,500. And that tells you the number of, of conversions that you would need. All right, so that's enough of, of the overview. If you have questions on that, let me know. That's not the point of today. We've covered this before. Now what we want to get into are the best practices. I'm going to start with number three because I want to cover number three twice. I'm going to cover it first, and then we're going to go through one and two, and we're going to come back. Because without question, the, the best, best practice, whether you're a white label partner and or RVP, is number three. I don't know how to emphasize this more to you. Using online terms and conditions is going to make you the most money. So let me read what's on the screen and then we'll dialogue some about it. So online terms and conditions is talking about how you 
engage someone. How are you going, if you're RVP, how does the white label partner complete their documentation? Or conversely, if you're a white label partner, how does the client, the entrepreneur, the small business owner, complete their documentation to enroll? If you use online terms and conditions, you will have much higher conversions. You will make a lot more money. So why is that? Well, again, you're going to have the highest conversion percentage. And so when you have online terms and conditions, you're going to typically need some sort of landing page. So in other words, it's where you send your prospect. So if you're an RVP, you have white label partner prospects. If you have a website, a landing page to send them to with online terms and conditions, most of them will sign up. If you're simply a white label partner and you have, an, you have a landing page with online terms and conditions, most clients will sign up. So that's the point is you don't have to do this. These are best practices. These are not requirements, but I wanna clarify with you, our top performing white label partners and our top performing, performing regional vice presidents follow this. So let, let's dig a little deeper. Let's, let's pull the layers off the onion. Let's say you have two scenarios. So you're an RVP and you either have a landing page with online terms and conditions or don't. So if you're an RVP and you have a prospective white label partner, you have to decide what your call to action is. The simplest call to action is, hey, prospective white label partner, I will text you the link to my landing page. It'll describe what we're doing. It has great information on it. And at the bottom, you can click and get started. Pretty simple. If you don't have that, now you're figuring out how to get them the information, how to explain it, and then how to get them to sign up. You're sending them Adobe's or DocuSigns or what have you. That's more cumbersome. And, and what we know as a society, people will sign up on terms and conditions that wouldn't otherwise. I mean, go try to buy an airline ticket. You have to agree to terms and conditions. Almost everything in life now, there's online terms and conditions and people will click and agree to it and it's binding. So it's not like we're trying to take advantage of someone. It's the same language either way. I'm not saying, oh, we'll get one over on them by doing it online. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying the simpler that you make it, the more people will do it. And so the same holds true for our white label partners. If you're a white label partner and you're going out to small businesses, you've got two options. You either have a landing page you can direct them to so they can review the information, click I accept, and they become a client of yours, or you have to figure out how to share information, how to get them signed up. So again, is this a requirement? No, but there's no doubt, no doubt that this is probably the top best practice is use online terms and conditions. Now, Scott Stroud, our chief marketing officer, if you want him to develop these for you, he can do it. If, if you want to do it yourself, that's fine. Or if you don't want to follow this best practice, that's fine with us too. It, it's up to you. But I can tell you, let, let's again use Jeff Sokol as our example. Jeff Sokol holds the record. Now, he wasn't an RBP, just white label partner, but as a, white, or as a referral partner. As a referral partner, Jeff worked with Scott, set up his landing page. Now, the landing page had some automation, right? So someone started the process but didn't finish it. They got prompted. They got reminded, of course, because that, that helps. But Jeff didn't talk to any of his client prospects, and he enrolled in one 30-day period, one month, over 400 clients. So using technology, using a landing page, using online terms and conditions is going to allow you to have maximum conversions, more people will sign up. So uh, before I go back to number one and numbers one and two, uh, what questions does anyone have about that? So again, you can create it yourself. Scott can create it for you. If Scott's gonna create it for you. He's got to talk to you and figure out exactly what functionality you want because uh, uh, Wallace is asking what it would cost. I, I don't know what it would cost. Scott will, sit down with you, understand what your needs are, give you some options and come up with some pricing. And again, if you need money to pay Scott to develop it, we can get you the money. That's not a problem. 
Now, the, the other point I want to make about number three before we go back to numbers one and two is if you're an RVP, I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to motivate your white label partners that are on your team to use online terms and conditions. Why? Because they'll have higher conversions. Why do you care if you're an RVP, if your white label partners have higher conversions? Because it makes you more money. Just imagine, and we didn't have the RVP role last year when Jeff had his uh, spectacular month, but let, let's take one of you like uh, Frankie or, or Collis or, or Alfred or, or Kat. Let's just imagine that one of you were the RVP and you brought on Jeff last year. And so you said, hey, Jeff, we recommend that you get online terms and conditions. We got a chief marketing officer and get that set up for you. And then Jeff does that. You're, you're Jeff. And now your Jeff generates 400 conversions in a month. This isn't some fictitious, oh, wouldn't it be great? I mean, this, this literally happened. And so there's just no question that you'll have more conversions and make more money as an RVP and or as a white label partner if you make it simple for your clients to enroll. Have a landing page with online terms and conditions. Okay, any questions on number three before we go back to numbers one and two? Any questions? Uh, okay, so the, the question is, so fourweekfunding.com is, if you wanted a real cheap, simple, fast landing page as an RVP to drive prospective white label partners to, what Scott can plug you into is essentially a replicated site like this, where every lead that comes through, you're notified, they agree to your terms and conditions. It's, it's beautiful. If you want something different, he can do custom work for you as well. Now, if you're a white label partner, then your landing page for recruiting clients wouldn't look like this. It would be a different landing page, of course. Okay, so that's best practice number one, or the, well, number three, but, but I think the most important that I would ask you to each consider. All right, let's back up to number one then. So now we're, we're gonna focus on those of you that are specifically RVPs. If you're a regional vice president, what I'd like you to consider doing is not only building a team of white label partners, which is your mission, that's your role, but you can monetize that upfront in addition to the 2.5% override. You say, well, how does that work? Well. In addition to them, them being the white label partners coming aboard your team, have them also participate in the guaranteed financing program. So they become a client as well as a white label partner. So that generates the 12.5 for you. And then that provides them money. So they have working capital, they can go buy a company vehicle. We were just working on a deal yesterday where we have a client that individually the client could not qualify for our car loan. I was looking at a 63, no, no, $75,000 car loan. Individual could not get approved. Got them approved yesterday because we set it up as a business purchase. We're financing the vehicle under the business. Now, according to the IRS, Section 179, he can take accelerated depreciation and write off that entire $75,000 vehicle this year, even though he's paying for it over time. So I digress a bit, but the point is, if you're an RVP, once you have someone signed up as a white label partner, or, or you might even mention it as part of the value proposition to say, hey, in addition to being a white label partner and helping clients and you earning the 12500 on average per client, we can also plug you in and get you $100,000 so you have the adequate working capital. Go get you a company vehicle. Make sure your payroll is covered or what have you. So who has questions on number one? which is quite simply, as you're recruiting your team of white label partners, go ahead and invite them. Don't I wouldn't require them of, that, of, them of this, but uh, encourage them, invite them to also how to become a client so they understand it and they have adequate working capital. Questions, comments, concerns on number one, pretty straightforward. 
maybe you already plan to do that, but if, if you build that, you almost create a checklist. Step one, sign up a white label partner. Step two, plug them into the guaranteed financing program, right? Two steps, two steps. So you'll make your ongoing passive override income, plus then you're getting paid off of the white label partner's individual capital raise. And obviously that's direct to you. So now you're earning the 12.5, make sense? Okay, last of the three best practices. And again, we started with number three because it's just so darn important. We bounce back to number one and then now we're on number two. When you're, if, if you are a regional vice president and recruiting white label partners, you, you can recruit whoever you want. Again, there's no cost to be an RVP. There's no upfront cost to be a white label partner. So it, it's not trying to get people to, to pay money. However, I think sometimes some of our RVPs overlook the obvious. So while anyone could become a white label partner, that's fine. It, it's, it's inaccurate to think that everyone has the same probability of generating volume. Let's use two examples. So we got Terrence on the line here. He's one of our white label partners and RVPs. He's a CPA in Illinois. So he's, he's real, he's on the line. So we got Terrence. So if I had a choice between recruiting Terrence as a white label partner, or let's say Chucky, Chucky's a make-believe person. Chucky's a great guy, but Chucky's not a CPA. Chucky hasn't worked in this space. Chucky doesn't have any small business relationships. Chucky's never built a team. Who's going to be better? Terrence, obviously, because he already has clients and relationships. And so what we're trying to emphasize here, you're, you're welcome if you're an RVP to add anyone that you want to become a white label partner. And, and, and sometimes people will surprise you. But the point is, if you at least focus some of your emphasis on current business to business professionals, they probably already have prospects and clients. Because I'll, I'll, I'll state this a different way, and I need to be delicate about it. So let's go back to Jeff. I'm, I'm bouncing around a bit. So Jeff, our record holder, and, and this record will probably be broke next month, but Jeff in one month enrolled 400 people. How many of those were his warm contacts? Zero, zero. Frankly, he bought leads and he funneled directly to his landing page and people signed up. So that's that that's the opposite i guess of what i'm saying but in general if you can add white label partners that already have a sphere of influence they will typically be more successful than someone that does not have a sphere of influence so focusing on business to business professionals when you're recruiting white label partners if you're an rvp makes a lot of sense because they can use this as a new door opener, a new value add, a new revenue stream, new arrow in their quiver. Well, there's lots of lots of business to business professionals. Here are just some examples. So this is not an all inclusive list, but insurance agents. You have property and casualty insurance agents, and you have life and health. You have those that, that focus on life insurance. Those that focus on voluntary benefits like Aflac and Colonial. You have those that are, that are kind of a hybrid, like the legal shield reps, what used to be called prepaid legal. I mean, there's just a wonderful group of professionals out there that probably would love to know how they could develop more small business relationships. And if they could go out, to take the same insurance agent. So the insurance agent, their goal is to go sell IULs, for example, indexed universal life policies. And so they want to sell IULs and they would sell it to anyone that, that's suitable, of course. But would they prefer to sell it to a business owner than a non-business owner? Probably so, because the benefit can be the business owner probably has a bigger bankroll, can afford it and needs a bigger policy. And then the business owner may in fact have employees that could also benefit. And so if you could offer insurance agents a free way to get the door open for more small business owner relationships, talking about guaranteed access to capital, 
I think a lot of them would be very interested, right? And so they would be a great fit. Others that are already out there knocking on doors, that's me knocking on my desk, other people that are already out there knocking on doors of small businesses, like merchant card processing representatives. You have some individuals that are already calling on small businesses. So they have a database or they have a list, they have unsold prospects, they have current clients. Wouldn't that make sense to give them this extra arrow in their quiver? So they could make an extra 12,500 on average for each of those small business relationships that they've already developed or are already developing. Also loan brokers, you're gonna run into some loan brokers that say, yeah, I have some people that can't get approved and that would be a great white label partner because now they have another arrow in their quiver, another resource. So this isn't an all inclusive list, but I just, I encourage you to think about that. If you're an RBP, Think about the people that can have the greatest impact, because if all you're doing, and, and I don't want to be negative at all, but if all you're doing is just finding the average Joe off the street, could the average Joe be successful? Of course, we'll train them, we'll support them, they'll have every opportunity, but the average Joe is going to have a hard time producing like what Terrence can or like what insurance agents can, or what merchant card processors representatives can, because they're already involved in business to business discussions and interactions. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, with that being said, then um, we've already covered number three, the use of online terms and conditions. We did number three first. So if, if you're late to the call, I apologize, but we, we covered it already. So those are the three best practices. There's a few others we could mention, but, but these are the three that if I were in your shoes as an RVP, I would strongly consider using online terms and conditions to recruit white label partners. And I'd strongly encourage you to consider that as a resource for the white label partners that you recruit on your team to use for their clients. I would strongly encourage you, if you're a regional vice president, to think not only in terms of adding white label partners, but also helping them get capitalized. It benefits them, puts more money in your pocket. And then I would strongly encourage you to consider reaching out to business to business professionals to be white label partners. If you're not a regional vice president, would like to become one, it's real easy, it's free and easy, email us or text us, let us know you'd be interested. We'll send you a simple one page enrollment form via Adobe. You'll complete that, uh, we'll get you on board with just two key videos to watch, won't take you long, less than an hour, and you'll be ready to start making money within a day. So with that being said, who has questions, comments, concerns on anything that we've discussed today? Anything, anything, anything. So we got a big group, Alfred, Bernard, Bruce, Carlos, Collis, DeWood, Diotat, Doug, Frankie, Jeanette, Jose, Kamara, Kat, Lon, Pauline, Terrence, Vernon, others. Who has questions, comments, concerns on best practices, primarily oriented towards our regional vice presidents. If you are one, this is very, very relevant. If you're thinking about becoming one, this is probably useful and you now know how to become one. And if you're here with us just simply as a white label partner, that's fine. Uh, certainly number three makes all the sense in the world. Any questions, comments, concerns? All right, Steve's asking again about getting his online terms and conditions set up. So just contact us either by email or text. We'll get you connected with Scott. Scott is our chief marketing officer. He's a really good guy. He's not a, a salesman, not to say that salesmen are bad, but, but he's, he's honest and has great integrity. He'll shoot you straight. He's very affordable and he'll help create what it is that, that you need. And, and it works, it works, it works. Now, do you, am I here just trying to upsell you to Scott's uh, development services? Absolutely not. I, I don't care. 
you could go develop it yourself or you can go on Fiverr or Upwork and hire someone else that, that's going to do it. Or, or you could skip it and not use online terms and conditions. But there, there's few things in life that I'm as confident in as this point. And I'll reiterate it and we'll close on it. There is no doubt, there's no doubt that you will make more money if you make it simple for your clients to engage. If you're RVP, you're looking to make it simple for your white label partners to contract and come aboard. If you're a white label partner, you're looking to make it simple for your clients to engage and come aboard. Online terms and conditions are used throughout our society now. And if you're not doing that, you're making it more complicated than it need, needs to be. And you'll have lower conversions and you'll make less money. All right. And we have one final question from Adam. So we have different funding programs and they fall into a couple categories. And so the guaranteed financing program is, is really our, our main push. The guaranteed financing program is not specific to one lender. We have a number of lender relationships that are preferred, but we can work with, with uh, really any lender. And uh, we have the ability to do non-conforming as well as conforming loans. In other words, those that, that need more flexible underwriting to be able to get approved. The SBA 7A Express program, we primarily run through one designated bank. I have, um, we met with their leadership up in Washington, D.C. I have great confidence in them. Uh, it's a federally chartered bank. Very good. But that SBA 7A Express program has a hard cap at 150,000. So low payments because it's spread over 120 months, 10 years, low interest rate because it's, it's regulated by the government, but it's only 150,000. Could that be the first step? Sure. So the SBA Express is a program is, is laser targeted on that 150,000 or below capital raise. Unlike the guaranteed financing program, the guaranteed financing program is not specific to that one type of funding. And so we identify the right type of funding based upon the client's mitigating circumstances. And it can be as, as much as need be. The largest project that we're working on right now is a casino and, and hotel in Las Vegas working on a $150 million capital raise. That's not usual for us. That's by far the largest. We have a mining company that recently signed up and we're looking for around 10 million for them. So, so we do multi-million dollar capital raises, but frankly, our bread and butter is, is much smaller. And so the guaranteed financing program guarantees uh, approval, guarantees financing. So there's no risk to the client but it's more flexible. It's not tailored specifically to the SBA requirements. All right, and then the last question we have before we end today is how do we sign them up for the guarantee program? So if you are a white label partner, we, we switched over platforms several weeks ago. So any of you that are on the new platform, you should have a white label drop box that's issued to you. So you can go into that Dropbox and you'll find the agreement. And we recently had a training going through step by step. If you're a white label partner and you're saying, hey, 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 I don't have this Dropbox. This isn't adding up. Then reach out to us, either email us or text us and say, hey, Houston, we have a problem. I don't know where my white label Dropbox is and we'll resolve that problem. But now we provide the agreements and resources in a white label Dropbox. So it's convenient to you. And Adam, we just very, very recently had a step-by-step -step training on, uh, on that process that we can make sure you have. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Great to talk to you. We'll see you back tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.